You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah Israel, 5778, 2018. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Beshalach, and this week's Parsha is the culmination of the exodus of the Jewish people's release from bondage, from slavery in Egypt, and it's the beginning of a march towards freedom, of a march towards receiving the Torah at Har Sinai, the greatest revelation that has ever occurred in the history of mankind. And I always like to look at the psukim, look at the verses, at the moment, at the moment of challenge, at the moment of difficulty, at that final moment before the Jews are about to be saved at Yom Sif to have the most amazing miracle occur to them where they are going to walk through the Yom Sif, walk through the water on dry land. Amazing miracle that all of us experienced only 3,300 years ago. But a miracle that goes down in history as perhaps the greatest miracle walking through the walking through the the water, walking through the 12 different channels that were opened up for the 12 tribes of the Jewish people. And just before that miracle occurs, the Torah tells us that the Jewish people called out. They called out to God. They were crying to God. On one side, they had the Egyptians. The Egyptians were racing after them, trying to destroy them. Yes, there was an Amud Anon. There was a protective cloud that stood between the Jewish people and the Egyptians. But the Egyptians were menacing. The Jewish people had been slaves for so long. And their captors were there waiting in to, to destroy them. On the other side was the water. It seemed like there was nowhere to go. But as is the case with, with uh, Hashem's protection of the Jew- Jewish people and the miracles that ensue when it seems like there's nowhere to go, there's one, one place to go, and that is up. It's towards Hashem, calling out to Hashem, calling out to God, and the amazing miracle that occurs as a result of that. I'd like to focus in on that exact moment. And Hashem says, Mati elai. Hashem says to Moshe, Rabbi to Moses, now is the time to stop from calling out to me, now is the time to move. Daber Alam so the Jewish people are enjoined. They're commanded to move. They're commanded to go into the water. Rely on miracles. You can rely and you can believe in the miracle that Hashem is going to now save the Jewish people, make a final, uh, create a final salvation for them, bring them through the water, destroy their enemies, destroy the Egyptians. I'd like to share with you an amazing and beautiful, beautiful medrash that speaks about the relationship of Hashem with the Jewish people, very interesting terms, and also speaks about this salvation. Why did Hashem place the Jewish people? He had already saved them. He had already taken them out of Egypt. Why was it necessary to have this final showdown with the Egyptians running after them one more time, destroying them once and for all? What was this about? Hadahu Dixiv, the Medrash tells us that this is what the verse means when it says it's in Shira Shirim, in the Song of Songs. Chapter 2, verse 14. The verse refers to the Jewish people. Yoinasi b'chagve asela. My dove, who is in the crack of a rock. Haya leimar yoino b'chagve asela. Umao sh'omar yoinasi. It should have just said a dove that's in the crack of the rock. Why does it say my dove? And the Amar of Yechenon, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yisrael, yoinasi. It's God speaking to the Jewish people, referring to them as His dove. Hashem calls the Jewish people his beloved dove. Now, there's an interesting contrast between other places where we find that the Jewish people are referred to as other animals. Re Maxiv. See what it says in Hosea chapter 7, verse 11. Vayhi Ephraim ki yoyna, poisa in leif. The Jewish people became, the Jewish people is referred to as Ephraim. That's when they're in a state of sin. So they were like a yoyna, like a dove. Foolish, without heart. They're like a, a um, unthinking dove. They go forward without thinking. What does that mean? In this case, the Medrash is understanding that it's a positive thing. All that I decree, Hashem says, they do it and they listen to me. The Jewish people are compared to a dove because a dove is a beautiful animal. It's a light animal. It, it just, you know, you can chase after the dove and it flies away. But when it comes to other animals, other animals are more brazen. They are more difficult to challenge. So the nations of the world, those who serve idolatry, 
They're difficult. They're tough like animals. Shanemar Gur Arya Yehuda, Binyamin Zev Yitra. Very interesting. The Pasuk brings uh, psukim, verses that refer to the Jewish people as animals. But the Medrash is understanding that the, the character traits of the Jewish people, where Yehuda is referred to as a lion, Benjamin is referred to as a wolf, Dan is considered like a, like a snake. The Fichachim Kashim Kinegad Avdi Kachavim. The Jewish people, the way that we relate to Hashem, the way that our relationship is with God is like a dove. We relate to God, we do God's will, we, we, whatever Hashem says, we just listen, as we'll soon see from the beautiful psukim that refer to it. But when it comes to the way that we interact with the nations of the world, the blessings it seems that, that Yaakov, Avinu, that Jacob gave to the tribes of Israel has to do with the way that they interact with the world. And so because the nations of the world act with us in a brazen way, like animals, so we have to have a midah, we have to have the character trait of brazenness in order to be able to conquer the mida, the character trait of the nations of the world. So we have to interact with them in this way. We have to be like a lion, we have to be like a wolf, we have to be like a snake. Lama. Why is this true? Because the nations of the world, the nations of the world turn to the Jewish people and they say, why are you keeping the Sabbath? What do you expect from Sabbath? What does the Sabbath give to you that you're keeping the Sabbath? The nations of the world challenge us. Why are, you make, why are you doing the circumcision? It's dangerous for the baby. Throughout history, until this very day in Europe, there have been nations who want to stop us from fulfilling the commandments. And so the Jewish people have to be as tough as an animal when it comes to to facing off with those who challenge us to, to fulfill the commandments. So it's very interesting. In our relationship with Hashem, we are soft. We do whatever Hashem says. In our relationship with the nations of the world, when they challenge us, we have to be tough. We have to face off with them because they are tough. When it comes to Hashem, we won't listen to the nations of the world when they try to stop us from our relationship with Hashem. But when it comes to God, so we're like a dove. We're like a perfect dove. Hashem makes a decree upon us. We do whatever God says. The verse tells us in Exodus chapter 4, verse 31, the Jewish people believed. They did whatever God said. The Jewish people said, whatever God says, we will listen, we will do, and we will listen. That's why Hashem refers to us as His dove. We are His beloved dove. Just the beautiful Medrash. Amir Belazer ben Pedas, Kevin Shiyatsi Yisrael in Mitzrayim. So now, here's where we get to our story, to our description of events, where the Jewish people are standing there. They're, 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 they left Egypt. They lifted up their eyes. So here, we have the Egyptians coming out to challenge us, to fight against us, to destroy us, to stop us from finally entering into that true relationship with God. Shnema of Pharaoh Hikriv. The verse says Pharaoh was getting close. Interesting. The Medrash tells us that it doesn't say that they were going. It doesn't say that the Egyptians were going. It says he went. He was traveling. Singular. What does it mean? When Pharaoh and the Egyptians went out to, to run after the Jewish people, they looked up. The Jewish people looked up and they saw a frightful sight. They saw something spiritual, a spiritual power. The spiritual power of, of Egypt, the, the angel which protects Egypt, the angel which represents Egypt in the heavenly spheres, was flying in the air. They were extremely fearful when they saw that spiritual power of the Egyptians. The verse says they were very fearful. So why is it singular? Egypt, singular, he was traveling after them. The name of this angel, the name of the angel which protected and represented the people of Egypt, Within the heavenly spheres, its name was Mitzrayim, Egypt. The way that Hashem works 
is that first he destroys the angel of that country before he destroys that country. We find that this is true in regards to Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to skip these psukim, but you see in regards to another place in Tanakh, that first Hashem destroys the angel of that place before he destroys the place itself. The, the angel was running after the Jewish people. When Hashem was going to drown the Egyptians in the sea, first Hashem drowned the spiritual power of the Egyptians in the sea. The verse tells us that Hashem shook Egypt, Mitzrayim, it's a reference, it's singular, to the, to the angel of Mitzrayim, the angel of Egypt. First Hashem destroyed that spiritual power, and then Hashem shook Pharaoh and all of his mighty warriors. It says, singular, his horse and his rider. That's referring to to their spiritual power. And it's also the singular reference the spiritual power is running after them. Very interesting, because it's the power which is koilu, it includes all of them. It's the spiritual power, which we've spoken about the koilu before. That's why it's singular. Umau ufaro hikriv. Mezrish tells us another point. First point we have is the love of Hashem, the way that the Jews act as a dove, as opposed to when it comes to the nations of the world, they act like they act like a lion or they act like a, they have a spiritual brazenness when it comes to the nations of the world. That's the first point. The second point is that there was a spiritual power of the Egyptians that was running after the Jewish people. Hashem destroyed it. Third point. Amazing, beautiful thing. That what is the idea that Paro, the verse says Paro was getting closer. But the way that he, the language that he uses is hikriv, which means it's actually a language of saying that he brought close. It doesn't mean that he literally means not that he came close, but that he brought close. Who did he bring close? Pharaoh, by chasing after the Jewish people, caused the Jewish people, caused someone else to come close. It caused the Jewish people to come close to God because they did tshuva, they repented. Amar of Brechia. Rav Brechia says, The the coming close of Pharaoh to the Jewish people was better for the Jewish people than a hundred fasts and prayers. Meaning, it's possible to do tshuva, it's possible to repent, come close to God through fasting and prayer. But the enemy of the Jewish people chasing after the Jewish people was more powerful than a hundred fasts and a hundred prayers. Lama, Shekeven Shirodfu Acharem. Why is this? That since... They, they ran after the Jewish people. The Jewish people saw their enemies coming. They were extremely fearful. They looked up to the heavens and they said, God help us. They repented. And they prayed. As the verse says in Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. The Jewish people called out to God. The people of Israel said to Moses, what have you done to us? Now the Egyptians are going to get back at us for all that we've done to them. We killed their firstborn. We took all of their money and we ran away. They were afraid. Didn't you tell us that we should borrow stuff from them? Now they're going to come and take everything back. They were standing there. They didn't know what to do. So can you imagine this amazing scene? It was unbelievable. It was so difficult. It was such a challenge. The enemy was coming, closing them off. Animals had come in from the wilderness and they, they were chasing after the Jewish people on one side. Egyptians on the other side. The, 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 the water was on the third side. The verse tells us that they were closed in by the wilderness. We find that when it says closed in, it's a reference to animals that are closing in on you. As the verse says in Daniel chapter 6, verse 23, There was a prayer that, that was said, God, please save me from the animals that are closing in on me, the, the lions. 
When the Jewish people saw that they were surrounded on three sides. The animals on one side, the Egyptians on the other side, and the, the water on the third side. They were trapped. There was nowhere to go. There was nothing else to do just to look up. Calling out, calling out to their Father in Heaven. And they called out to God. The verse says they called out to God. Very interesting and beautiful. Just such a... I mean, this is the way that we see when it comes to personal challenges. This is the way we see when it comes to national challenges. Look throughout the history of the Jewish people. Look at 1967. Look throughout the times. Jewish people face off with a challenge. It looks like we're okay. New challenge arises. It looks like we're we're done for. We pray. Miracles happen. Why does it work this way? Medrash tells us an amazing and interesting thing. Why did Hashem do this? Hashem wanted their prayer. Hashem wants us in prayer. What is the idea of this? We need to understand. So Hashem wants us to pray. Hashem wants us to call out to Him. Hashem wants us to ask for His help. He wants us to have a real relationship with Him. So sometimes, if we forget about the relationship, if we don't recognize it enough, Shem creates a situation which seems intensely difficult so that we will recognize that it's God who is saving us, who's taking care of us, who's, who's watching over us. Amr Yishu ben Levi, Lema'ad Avar Doimer. Rabbi Yishu ben Levi gives us an analogy. Lamelech. This is comparable to a king. Shaya Baba Derech. A king was walking along, he was coming along on the path. And there was a princess who saw the king, and he she called out to him, Please, please save me from these bandits. Shoma Melech Vitzila. The king heard her, and he saved the princess. Acher Yamim Bikesh Lisa Isa, the Isha. He decided after not too many days, not, not long afterwards, he said, I decided I want to marry you. She, he was he was wishing that she would speak to him, but he she wasn't interested in speaking to him. What did the king do? He took those bandits out of jail and and he created a situation where she again needed him. In order that she call out and that the king would respond. So the king created a situation where they would need where he would be needed again by the very princess who he wished to marry. That's an analogy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu God, he was ready to save the Jewish people. He had saved them already. There was something missing in the relationship. The Jews had not yet acknowledged. They hadn't sung that song yet, as the Eitz Yosef explained. They hadn't, there wasn't a completion of the salvation of the Jewish people yet. So Hashem created a new situation which was not a real situation, which was not a true danger. It seemed like a danger, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu created so that they would call out to Him, so that they would acknowledge God, and God would save them one final time, and then they would come and they would sing. Kevin Shabo, okay, Giro, okay, Kevin Shabo, Aleha, Alisti So she called out again to the king, back in the analogy, Omer Leha Melech, Lekach Ha'isi Misav Leshmoya Kalech. This is what I wanted. I wanted to hear your voice. I wanted you to interact with me. The Jewish people, when they were in Egypt, and they were enslaved, they started to call out to Hashem. They started asking Hashem, please save us. And they lifted their eyes to God. Verse tells us in chapter 2, verse 23 of Exodus, that they called out to Hashem. They needed that help. God saw immediately. God started to take them out. With an outstretched arm, an amazing power. He wanted to hear the voice again. He wanted them to call out. He wanted them to, to speak to Him. And they weren't interested. They didn't have that relationship was missing. He caused Pharaoh to run after them. Pharaoh came close. Immediately the Jewish people called out again. I wanted to hear that sound. Back to this first verse which we quoted from Shir Hashir and from the Song of Songs. My beloved dove 
who's in the crack of the rock. The verse doesn't say, let me hear a voice. Let me hear your voice. I want to hear the voice I heard before, your voice, the voice which I know you by. Which voice? That same sound that I heard when you were in Egypt, when you called out to me and I said, Hashem, please help me. Hashem, please save me. I want to hear that voice again. That's the real voice. That's the real connection. That's what Hashem wants. That's why the verse says, Let me hear your voice. I want to hear that same voice. I want to hear that same sound. I want to have that same deep connection. Hashem is saying to the Jewish people, Hashem was saying to Moshe Rabbeinu, Why are you calling out to me? I want... I want the original prayer. That same prayer that they already called out to me, I want that prayer again. And that's what I've been looking for. Not a new prayer, but the same prayer, that same connection that the Jewish people had in their challenge, in their difficulty. That's what I want now. And that creates the relationship of Yenasi Tamasi, of the beautiful dove. The beautiful dove. The Jewish people slip into the arms of God. We just fly up into the arms of God. Just... I think this is such a beautiful, beautiful medrash, the, the beauty of it, the relationship of the Jewish people, this dove, this beloved dove to God and how God wants our prayers. God puts us through challenges. You know, we think, oh, it's so hard. It's so hard, the challenges. It's so hard. Hashem puts us through these things because He wants to hear our voice. He wants to hear a depth of love. He wants to hear that voice that He's heard before, that yearning. That need, that connection, that's what's going on here. And sometimes it comes because we're in a challenge. Sometimes it comes because we have walked out of the challenge and Hashem has saved us. Sometimes it comes because the nations of the world are challenging us with their brazenness and we need to respond with our brazenness. And sometimes we see the spiritual power of the nations of the world and it seems like they're more powerful than us. And Hashem assures us that I am coming to save you. I'm coming to destroy their spiritual power. And I'm coming to strengthen your spiritual power and show over and over again how the Jewish people are the ones who reflect that beautiful, simple power, that simple, that dove that just effortlessly flies up. Doesn't have to have brazenness of the lion. Doesn't have to have the brazenness of a wolf, of a snake. All of these animals which have brazenness, we need that power as well. But ultimately, it's all about the love and the willingness that we have to do Hashem's will, because we see Hashem is there for us in all of our challenges. So I want to bless you. Please bless me back. Hashem should help us in all of these different stages, in all of the different places where we find ourselves, whether it's in the challenges of daily life, or whether it's in the moments of salvation, whether it's in the moments where we feel oppressed, challenged, and we need to bring up the spiritual power of the chayos, of the different animals that are inside of us. Hashem should help us to be able to have that spiritual fortitude. Hashem should fill us with love, with connection, with a deep connection. We should be able to pull forth those spiritual kaychas, that ability from within inside of us, the voice that we've used before. Hashem should help us to use it again. Hashem should bring us to that place of Yainasi Tamasi, of the perfect dove, the perfect love. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.